Today what we're going to be talking about is probably one of the most fascinating devices that has ever showed up in my P.O. box. This device right here that looks like a Super Nintendo cartridge is the ReTerminal by Seed Studio. What this is, is a little computer with the Raspberry Pi CM4 Compute Module. So with that, it has the Cortex-A72 in here. We have four gigabytes of LPDDR4 memory. It features dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5. And this little screen right here is a five inch 720p touch display. Now this thing has numerous use cases. Of course, you just use it as a base computer as it does feature the typical Raspberry Pi operating system on it. You can use it for robotics. It has some pre-included sensors that we're gonna be talking about. You of course could use it for your smart home applications. There's really a lot you could do with this. And we're gonna be talking about some of that after we tell you about the sponsor of today's video. These wallets are awesome. They feature a quick release mechanism that fans out all your cards, saving you time and effort. The wallet I have here is called the Parliament and it's my personal favorite. Feels great, quality stitching, and there are additional pockets for extra cards and inside there's a great place to clip your bills or place the optional Bluetooth tracker with solar charging. Don't wanna use this tracker? Well, they have the same wallet and an aluminum card holder with the perfect spot to place an Apple Air tag. They have a fair bit of items with different colors and styles, so chances are they will have the perfect item for you. And better yet, if you use the code TECHA at checkout, you could get up to 25% off all orders or 35% off if you spend more than $200. As part of their Black Friday sale running until the 27th, you can also get a free cash clip. So check the link down below. So focusing back onto this device in the box, it really didn't come with much other than the actual device itself. And looking at more of the IO particularly, there's a lot of uh, mounting options on this device. There's things on the side. And of course there's this one that I've attached this little mini tripod to. As you can see there, this is the device with nothing attached to it at all. On the front here, we have some LED indicator lights, including power, sys, SATA, and user. These buttons right here, you can program to do really whatever you want by default. I think they're just attached to some uh, letters in the regular operating system. Over here on the side, we have our 40 pin GPIO. So you can connect really whatever you could connect to any regular Raspberry Pi there. And on this side, it's just some more familiar stuff. We have our USB-C for power. We have a, I believe this is mini or micro HDMI here, whatever is standard on the Pi 4. We have our gigabit ethernet and two USB ports. There's a little reset button here on the bottom. And yeah, really that is about it. That's the entire device. Within the device, there's actually some additional built-in modules, including a light sensor, real-time clock, there's a little buzzer, and there's an accelerometer in here. So first I'm gonna pop these off, these little uh, grippy guys there. And then hidden in there, there are some screws. Now the cool thing is, other than the re-terminal itself, the only thing it came with is this little screwdriver. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that to pop these out here. So there's our first one, second. So with those four screws out, I'm gonna go ahead and just run my finger along this plastic here to pull the clips. If we pop this off, this right here is our industrial high speed interface. So there we go, now that we have the back cover off, what we're gonna to want to do real quick is pop off this heat sink. And it, it is a rather impressive and beefy heat sink for what it is. Which it is kind of a good thing because if you are gonna be using this in industrial applications, I mean, there are factories that get hot. I used to work in a uh, Frito-Lay manufacturing facility and one of the biggest problems we had there was equipment like this overheating. So there we go, our heat sink is now off. I mean, it is a pretty good looking heat sink and we can see down here, it actually has a uh, thermal pad on the CPU unit. So now from here, they're kind of hard to see, but it looks like there's two screws in there and two screws up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble those. So we'll start with this one by our Pi module. So now with those screws loosened, this whole thing should pop off now. There we go. And there we are, we're looking good. So I'm gonna swing this around here. Whoa. The last thing I wanna lose are these little teeny screws here. And here's our board. So from the inside, we have our GPIO pins right here. This chip right here is the MCU for the LCD screen. We have a 22 pin CSI camera port. This is a 15 pin CSI camera port. Right here, it's plugged in currently to the front screen, but this is a DSI display port and our touch interface. And then on this little Pi board here, we have our Wi-Fi Bluetooth chip are 32 gigabytes of eMMC flash storage. This is our gigabit ethernet PHY. Right here is our RAM. 
And then of course this right here under this little thermal pad is our Broadcam BCM 2711 CPU. This guy right here is the connect for our light sensor. Under that, this little teeny tiny chip here is our accelerometer. We have some of the ports over here we talked about earlier. This bigger chip right here is our internet transformer. Down here we have a reset button. We have our SD card slot. This is our actual little buzzer here. Of course, this right here is our RTC battery. We have our real-time clock chip right here, super small. And there's a lot more going on here, but that is above my uh, knowledge level. Overall, definitely a real nice looking piece of hardware. And then right here, it talks about some of the actual use cases for the device. We have the uh, weather dashboard or robot control, which if you have a factory, you can install one of these and actually program it and set it up to be able to have a touch screen and, it, and interact with all the actual hardware in your facility. AI applications, and of course, if you are uh, a little smarter than me, you can design your own user interfaces using a variety of languages. And it's cool because directly on here, you have links to their wiki and various resources to kind of help you actually program and design various things. So building your own UI using Flutter, it goes into some of the things that you're gonna want to do to actually jump into the proper environments. And the tutorials here are quite extensive. You can see how far it goes, code examples, and a whole heck of a lot more. Go down a little bit, we can see some of the practical tools. This is compatible with Home Assistant, and there is a full guide right here. So this is what it could look like if you actually utilize Home Assistant. You can set this up as your dashboard, mount it like right by your front door so you can turn on and access everything with ease. And I mean, that, that looks really good. It has even like the colors there so you can change your uh, bed lamp to a uh, red, enable, disable, LED strip control. Super cool, basically anything you could do with Home Assistant. And of course, just like with Flutter, they have a whole comprehensive guide on how to do just about everything. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead, plug it in, set it up, and check out what is pre-included on this little system. All right, so this right here is our re-terminal plugged in, ready to go, it just takes that single USB there. And this is what we're gonna see when we first boot up into the system. Just a little warning saying that the default SSH password and all that hasn't been changed. That is something that is definitely recommended to do. I'm gonna use the touch screen and hit okay. And now it's gonna run us through a real quick setup wizard. So before we start, we have a few things to do. Let's go next. Here it's asking our location, so I'm just gonna go next. And then here you can see it's asking us to change our password. So what I'm gonna do real quick is just change it to something super simple. And you can see a keyboard doesn't really come up or anything. So I'm just gonna switch it to these four buttons. And if I uncheck hide characters, you can kind of see what they are there. ASDF, which obviously for security purpose, I would not recommend making this here a actual password. That right there is just asking us if we have black borders. We don't have, we do, but not on our actual screen. So I'm just gonna go next. And then we have our Wi-Fi network. So you can see it automatically detected some. I'm gonna go ahead and skip this for now and hit next. And then we have the option to update. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that for now and done. So now we are in the system and it is your typical Raspberry Pi operating system. So you can see if I tap there, I have all the options for internet, sound, video, various accessories, run, shutdown, and some more. I'm not gonna dive too far into this as you probably have played with this or at least seen this operating system in the past. But what I am gonna do is go ahead and that icon right there is re-terminal. I'm gonna set this down open that up there, wait for it to launch. And there we go. So this is the default re-terminal dashboard. So if I get a little closer, you can see some of the system configuration on the side there, including the build number, Raspberry Pi version, the Raspberry and operating system, the kernel version and all that. If I tap dashboard here, it's gonna take us to just some general system usage. So we have our CPU, RAM, storage, and CPU temperature there. And you can see over here on the side, it just kind of tabbed us down one slot. If I go right here, this is gonna show us some of our sensors and some of the other UI and things that we could do. Let's go ahead and zoom it on in just a bit here so you could see it better. This right here is our light sensor and the sensor is right here. So if I'm to cover this up, you could see the different feedback we're getting there when I actually manipulate that sensor. And then of course we have our accelerometer. So if I kind of tilt this, you could see that bottom graph showing us some feedback depending on how our system's laid out. Of course, all this is open source, so if you have programming knowledge, you could actually program this to detect it and actually have a, a decent use case for this. The buttons over here on the side is just kind of showing that they work. If I tap the buttons, you can see the screen giving me some feedback that the buttons are working. Touch it panel, if I go ahead and tap in the center, you could see where that feedback was. So it's just all 
or showing us that all these sensors are working as they should be. If I go down here, we just have an example schematic of something that we could do with this in a factory. This page doesn't really have any function, this is mostly just for demonstration. And then of course, if we go down here, we have some settings, so you can enable or disable camera, VNC, SSH, IC2, the LED backlight, so we can uh, lower and raise that as we need to. Of course, we can shut down, reboot, and exit from here. So that is just some of the stuff that is included on this little device. So with that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell so you do not miss any future content going over various single board computers, interfaces like this. We cover software, news here, and a whole bunch of things on this channel. It's definitely worth a follow. And with that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.